everybody and welcome to today's video. I hope the day is treating you kindly. If you're new here, my name is Latte and I'm really happy to have you here because today we're going to be decorating some small spaces on my island. So feel free to use any of these as ideas for your own island. In total, in today's video, we have four separate speed builds. So I'm going to go right ahead into the first one. I have this clip that's in front of my orchard that I wasn't really too sure how to decorate but I figured it'd be perfect space to make a mini farm. So we are turning this mini cliff into a star fragment farm. So it fits in with my fairy core theme because we are kind of straying from that. Anyways, the first thing that I'm doing is replacing the lily of the valley with the karupi snack. I have been using these as frogs on my island. I know we have frog models, but I just think these are so much more cuter than them. And then I am putting down a couple lines of dirt so that way we can put the star fragments on top of it. Also you can use custom design dirt patches instead if you don't want to use the in-game pathing but I've chosen to use the in-game dirt because I wanted it to show up on my map. I decided to put down a shovel so it kind of looks like the star fragments are in the middle of being dug up and I decided to go with the purple one. I was originally going to go with the pink version of this shovel but it felt like it blended in too much in th into the background and I wanted there to be some contrast. And speaking of contrast, I decided to go with cooler tones for the star fragments since the area behind it is quite warm toned. I wanted there to be a little bit of contrast and kind of make it pop out a bit. I had this idea of using the moss ball as sort of a seedling for the star fragments but then I felt like it looked a little too weird and it didn't quite make any sense. So I just decided to scrap that idea and just use star fragments for all the rows. I also ended up changing out the yellow star fragments into the Aquarius one because I realized I didn't have enough of the yellow ones and I felt that it looked a little bit out of place just having one yellow star fragment. Once I put all those down, I put some barbed wire fencing behind it just to add a bit of a background to this build and then added in some flowers and some custom designs and then I was basically done with this one. A star fragment farm looks really cute during the day but it shines the most at night time so here are the shots of it just after sunset and I love that the colours shine through the most when it's dark it makes it look so cute and it adds a little bit of variety to your island so hope you guys enjoyed this one. On to the next build is just a little mini picnic. I have this awkward, really small empty space that is next to Nook's Cranny and the museum build that I did the other day. This build is super quick because the space is so itty bitty but I just added in the mush partition behind it as a little background and we are using my favourite yellow blanket design. I absolutely adore this one and you can replicate this with pretty much any other blanket design that you have. I like putting food items on top of the picnic blanket especially if it's a small one like this. I decided to use the sticky rice dumplings that we got with the dragon boat festival event and I'm really happy that I did because it looks so delicious and now every time I walk past this area I just want to have some in real life. I also added in some flowers across the river just to kind of finish the area off since I'm not really going to go back here to decorate. Then I added in some stone pathing and then we were pretty much done with this. So like I mentioned, a super quick and simple little tiny space to decorate and I love picnic spots. So highly recommend if you have a little awkward space like this, just add a picnic spot. It works itself out. <laughs> So on to the next build, we are making a graveyard. Now I know a graveyard isn't really for everybody's islands, but I feel like it's a good build to have if you want something that's a little bit creepy, a little bit spooky, but you don't want to make your island completely creepy or spooky, you just want like a little hint of it. I feel like this is perfect to add. So I recently discovered that if you add a gel bar behind a cliff, it makes it look like a really tall fence. So that is what I'm doing right now. And then to help it blend in with the trees and the whole build, I added in some hedge fencing on the leftmost side just so it kind of hides the edge of the gel bar and makes it kind of flow better for the rest of the space. And since this build is part of the castle ruins, to help it flow better and make it seem like it fits in with the surrounding areas, 
I decided to add in the stone pathway and some dirt patches and I tried my best to make it look as worn away as possible so that way it kind of just fits in with all the areas surrounding it. There are so many different directions you can go with when designing a graveyard for your island. You can make it overgrown and sort of in ruins like the vibe that I'm going for today. Or you can make it really pristine and proper and like it's really new. Or you can make it really rustic. It sort of just depends on how you decide to design it. I'm also adding in a little fairy village off to the right of the build. The reason why I decided to add a little fairy village here is because my island is a mix of different themes so just to help it flow better I'm trying my best to replicate certain designs throughout the island so that way it looks like it fits and flows in well together. We have quite a few options for gravestones in the game and I've decided to use the western style stones for my build and even though the gothic mirrors aren't really considered a gravestone, I think they kind of look like one so I decided to use that as well for this build. Also, if you put the gothic mirrors backwards so that way the back is facing the front instead of the mirrored side, it looks like a really cute stone fence. So that's also another idea for you. I was actually considering doing that for this build but then I decided to use the in-game stone fence instead so that way it kind of blends in better with the rest of the surrounding area since that's the fence that I've used throughout the area you might see like peeking out from time to time as I move around. I've decided to also use the mom's candles. I somehow accumulated so many of these. Um, I think just mostly from time traveling to September I've just managed to accumulate so many of them but I feel like they work really well in a graveyard because they kind of look like candles that you would put in front of a gravestone so i decided to use them for this and also it looks really pretty at night time it adds a little bit of light to the area but it also makes it a little bit creepy as well in my humble opinion i feel like the most appropriate flower to use for a graveyard is either white or black flowers so i decided to scatter some black flowers throughout the build and then once i was sort of happy with how everything was coming out I am working on the front of the build and I was originally going to use the iron and stone fence I believe is what it's called but I wasn't happy with how tall it was it kind of blocked off the items behind it so I decided to stick with the stone fencing. A graveyard is one of those builds where it looks really cool during the daytime but it shines the most at night time so with that in mind I decided to add in some mush lamps so that way the area was a little bit more illuminated and then I'm just adding in some final touches really. I added in some more pathways and some more dirt and more stone. I was also keeping in mind of how I wanted the tombstones to be laid out. I originally was going to go for a uniform look and have everything in sort of a straight line but then I decided to make them a little bit scattered so that way it added in some interest and also made the area feel a lot more full than it would be normally. I wanted there to be a little bit more stone flooring on the ground so I'm just adding some in that was underneath the fence and I'm putting the fence back and I'm adding a couple flowers. I also decided to add another one of those throwback gothic mirrors next to the fencing so that way it kind of makes it feel a little bit more full and then we are basically done with this build. I'm really happy with the way it all came out in the end and of course it looks the best at night time so here's what it looks like. It looks absolutely stunning and creepy at the same time. Definitely not a place I want to be by myself at night time. We are now on to the last build for today's video and we are going to be making a mini shop. So I have a little space that's in front of the orchard that I wasn't really too sure what to add and I thought it'd be a fun idea to make a little mini shop front. So I've started by mapping out a 4x4 square using the plank pathway that we have in the game. You can obviously use custom pathing if you prefer that. I'm using two stalls to kind of act like the walls of the shop and then I'm just decorating it to fit in with the orchard. But I've seen so many different variations of this design. I've seen little bakeries, cake shops, all sorts of different ideas. So 
I feel like this is a really good design that you can just take and customize to fit in with your own island theme. In the original idea that I had for this build, the mush log was actually supposed to go next to the chalkboard menu and I was going to put some seating around it. Uh, but then I decided that it was a little bit too crowded for that and I wanted the area in front of this build to be walkable So instead I scrapped that and used the mush log as a display for the cake And then I also decided to put the clear furnace behind the store So that way when you're walking past it, there is a little something behind there, but it's not really Overbearing, it's just like a little detail that you'll notice as you walk past at this point of the build, you could totally just call it quits, add some flowers and bushes and be done with it. But I wanted to add a little pond behind this so that way it just filled up the space a bit. And I knew that I wanted to add a water feature here so I just went ahead and did it during this build. I'm just making a little circular pond and then in the middle of that we're going to be adding a decoy duck. So that's basically it. Although you could use a circular pond as a filler space if you have a really awkward space that you're not too sure what to put, just make a little circular pond. It will work itself out. <laughs> Seriously though, it does make a really cool feature and you can always replace the object in the middle of it with something else. I've done flowers before, I've done star fragments before, the star clocks, pretty much anything goes. So we're now finishing up the shop front, I wanted to add a couple more things to make it feel more finished, added in some flowers, and then to really sort of finish off the build, I added in the log stakes. I feel like they're a really good border without it being too overwhelming, and it's not as big as a fence, so I feel like it's a really universal item. And with that, we are done with this build, so this is how it ended up turning out like. I'm so happy with the way that it came out. It looks super cute and I think it's a really fun design. And that is it for today's video. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful for any of you who are struggling to decorate some small spaces. And let me know if you'll be using any of these ideas for your own islands. If this video helped you in any way and you would like to see more content like this, I would love it if you gave the video a like so that way I know to keep making content like this. And if you enjoyed my videos and would like to see more in the future, I would love it if you subscribed as well so that way you don't miss out on any future uploads. Otherwise, I love you all so, so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye!